Today we're doing something kind of exciting. We're actually going to a seminar learning how to properly wash a car. Now it's bring your own materials. So uh, I got some brand new soap that I like to use when I wash my cars. I have my trusty bucket that I've been using for years and you can definitely tell I've gotten some use out of it. And then I can't forget my trusty wash mitt. Oop. Yeah, this is always good. This thing works great. This definitely isn't your average car wash location. This isn't actually a car washing seminar, that was kind of a lie. I'm here, like I said, I was doing the other day with Matt from Obsessed Garage, and he's going to be showing me how to properly wash a car. And if you don't know Matt, he is probably the most extreme level of meticulous OCD. Maybe not most extreme, but somewhat extreme. Okay, I mean, look, look, pretty, pretty look in here. Up on the scale of extreme. So how most of you guys probably just wash your car in a very simple method. I know there's some of you guys that wash cars properly out there, I'm sure. Um, it's gonna be kind of interesting to hear all the things that I do wrong and all the things that pretty much anyone could do even if you don't have the proper equipment. Because I know there's a lot of like little tricks and stuff to avoid yeah, ruining I mean, your paint. That's what we're gonna go through, just the, just the, the basics of washing a car and doing it. Uh, you know, there's, there's a thousand ways to do it, but this is the way I do it, which the key is we just don't wanna scratch the paint. And so we're going to develop a process that you'll be able to repeat over and over and over again with all your cars. You know, it, it doesn't cost that much to do it right. And so we're going to go through that. If you're new to my channel and uh, you couldn't tell the resemblance with Matt's little garage, whatever you want to call it in here, Matt is the one that helped me design the garage and kind of source and put everything together. Yeah, this has been my live stream. This, this isn't really a garage, it's just my wash bay. So I have the boom pole and it's behind you. So this, this is designed to be just my car wash and then I'm building a garage in the back. That's the next step. <laughs> I forgot about this thing. Do you use it? Oh yeah, every day. Really? The bubble? Yeah. The wall. No, this is good. Let's make sure to use the rough side. Okay, this too, like I, I dropped it in the like rocks and dirt before, but I think it'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, look, it, it's, it just it fits in with all this other stuff. It's perfect. <laughs> is this the microfiber cabinet? No, it's the other one. Look how amazing this is. It's like a store. So one of the first things that I don't do normally, Matt washes the wheels on his car first, which makes sense when you think about it, because most people will kind of wait and they'll use the soapy water that's left over to wash their wheels. But when you do that, then the water starts drying on your car and you have like uh, water spots. So he does the wheels first. I'm learning already. The first thing Matt does is So the first step is just spraying the wheel cleaner on it, right? Correct. Then you make sure to try to get it inside, like first, kind of behind the barrel as well, right? Yeah, first get it in the barrel. That's what I usually do. Ooh, this stuff smells interesting. It smells citrusy. Yeah, a lot of people really hate the smell of this stuff. Yeah. I, it, the smell of it's a lot worse. I think what helps us here is the humidity knocks down some of the stench. You let that sit for a little while? Correct. And then yeah. it was this brush that we used for the barrel first? Yep. Okay. Minute or two. So th this is called the easy detail brush. Gotcha. Yeah, I normally don't clean my barrels just because it's so difficult because I normally use a wash mitt, but I can definitely see it being a lot easier with this. Yeah. Do you do the spokes with this too? No. So this is pretty much for the barrel. Right. So if he pulled the uh, grab the pressure washer gun in your other hand. Oh, and and then I should wash this brush out like every time, so I'm not yeah, just like swinging every, it. Yeah, every third time or so. Just get it. <laughs> That's kind of like a big must, from coming from someone who just uses normal hoses. See, I've been torn on this. Like, is it is it better to have a legit, see, see, because the, when they're pressure washing, there's either junk or really, really high end. There's like, there's like a Porsche 918 or like a Kia, and there's nothing in between. Gotcha. And so that's the thing I struggle with. Would I rather have a Kia or would I rather just use a good garden hose, you know? And, and so, you know, the pressure washer does help, but for the first 10 years of washing, I used the Dawn garden hose and it was just fine. You know? Doesn't pressure washing help a lot for bugs? A little bit. I wish I brought my truck, man. That thing is so bad and I could even wash so badly. Well, that's why I didn't want you to bring a truck. I <laughs> have to deal with it. I've never used a brush before, but uh, this is really, really helpful. So hit the brush with the water first. To get it wet? Yeah. And hit it, you know, every five or six. Another thing is you always want to make sure you keep everything off the ground. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, the brush Especially makes it... in Florida with soap, or with uh, sand, I should say. The brush makes it so nice you're getting behind these. I don't know why I never thought of a brush. I'm always trying to get a washman in there and like scraping up my knuckles on these spikes. 
So what's on this? Is it wheel cleaner? Like what's making a sud so hard? Yeah, so that's the advantage of this wheel cleaner. This this is called Nexet Color Tech. So it's almost like a uh, wash and wheel cleaner. Yeah, I don't know. It just makes me feel better when I see some suds. <laughs> most, most wheel cleaners don't, like if they have the that solution in it to turn purple to break down the iron, then they generally don't. Don't suck. Yeah, they don't have any kind of lubrication. So this is like from an actual lamb? So blow it up, get some water on it first. It's got water on it. <laughs> so now give it a good spray. I'm not used to the pressure washer. See, I think that's something that we almost need to polish for. Like in between these spokes, it's still. And there's some built up. And see, that that won't happen. If you wash your wheels properly regularly enough. Correct, yeah. I mean, that, and that's the main advantage of doing this because we just mentioned and you know on your way home we're probably gonna get dirty again we're gonna use tire and rubber cleaner which is something that I never use ever 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 but apparently oh that's nice that's great but apparently it'll make a big difference when it comes to uh, like dressing the tires it'll actually last so and usually you know when you're doing the tire you'll probably want to do you know a quarter of it spray it off and another quarter spray it off and then, you know, with the tire, the faster the motion, the more work you get done. So. I'll do it again real quick. One hour in and we've cleaned two wheels. Here's another little adding a layer of silicon dioxide to the wheels. And the way that this works is you want to get it on and get it right off. This stuff isn't like super protective, like it doesn't add like a massive layer of protection, but it will help with, with stuff that, you know, that, that, that would bond. It's funny, this is all the stuff that I do last and you do it first. You theoretically shouldn't have any iron. <laughs> that would be very bad if you had iron here. Yeah. You know, so it should just be you know, oil. So, so we shouldn't see any purple there. That's why I do it last. Left hand, left hand, Adam. Leave it in your left hand. <laughs> <laughs> your camera lens is gonna be all jacked up now. I'm used to hoses. Can you make sure my camera lens is okay? So we're gonna start off by foaming the car with a foam cannon. Now, I know it's really important. I think it's to kind of like elevate all the crap off the surface of the car so you're not moving it around and making swirl marks, but can you give a little bit more detailed explanation? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, foaming the car is, if you talk to a lot of professional detailers, they talk about when maybe it's, it's more fluff than it, than it, than it actually, fun, than, than actual function. But the general idea is soap emulsifies or lifts, hopefully lifts dirt or breaks down dirt. And so you spray the soap on the car and the soap runs off the car, so hopefully you're pulling some of the dirt off. That's the general idea behind foaming it. Another interesting thing that they do is putting the soap actually on the mitt. Apparently gives you a little bit better suds and rather than kind of like spraying all the soap out of the bucket, it'll kind of retain in the mitt. Is the correct procedure to foam from the top down and like kind of angle it so you push the stuff off the car? No, no. You're, the key is to get the foam to sit on the car so that way it'll do its thing, hopefully breaking down some dirt and then um, we'll run, it'll eventually run off the car and then gravity will pull it down. Told me. General philosophy here, two bucket method, right? I'm gonna put the dirty mitt in the one bucket, rinse it off, and then put it in soap, and then get it on the car. So you're right, we start top down, right? So I wanna start up here. Now, one of the keys, and the reason why I don't like using a mitt, like I, I, why I don't like putting my hand in here, is I feel like I'll have a tendency to lean in, have more pressure, right? <laughs> Matt, your buckets are rolling away. No, that's what I always do. The, the bearings in them are too good. Good wax or sealant on the on the on the paint. This should be all I really need. And so as I'm you know as I'm washing, 
Are you going in straight lines or? I see, I don't think it matters. What about if you have a hard to get spot, like let's say from a bug or like some sound creature? Would you just go over that and leave it and then come back to it later rather than Bingo. scrubbing it? Bingo. Because so, when you scrub it, then the mitt picks it up and then you're moving it around, right? Right, right. So let's say you know we had a bird dropping or something on your roof, we're going to do it on the front bumper here. Uh, but if we have a spot that you can't get with this, you don't want to be sitting here because all, all I'm doing is I'm loosening up the sand and dirt that's on the paint. So I, I'm lifting some of it, but a lot of it I'm just pushing it around, which then hopefully will get rinsed off. I feel like washing cars is one of those things where like you can get as crazy as you want. Is double bucketing also a thing where you can get like as crazy as you want in terms of how often you... Yeah, some people would like to use a, a, a new sponge for every time they touch the car. So this is something that I've been wanting to get. This is a deionizer. Matt, you want to give like a super brief explanation of what it does? It allows you to rinse the car off and not have to dry it. Because it won't get minerals. It removes all the minerals and stuff in the water. So there's some sort of like powder in here, right? That's resin. And isn't it what, about like two or three dollars per every car? Something like that? I looked it up. No, it's not that expensive. This is my original, I mean the thing's like 380 bucks, something like that. And uh, I've probably done 300 washes with it thus far. Okay, maybe it was if you used deionized water for the entire car rather than just yeah. the rinse. Yeah, you have, yeah. I only be using all the rinse. All of the dirt off the paint. I'll go in my wash buckets and I'll use a bug sponge to get these heavier bugs off. And no, it doesn't blow gas through or oil through the outlet. <laughs> If my car had like a decent coating on it, then uh, when he used that leaf blower, probably would have blown all the water off. But I still think the cool thing about using the leaf blower is that it gets water out of a lot of places where a towel wouldn't. Yeah. Like in those lug nut holes or lots of little like uh, body lines and stuff. Yeah, I especially like it for the wheels, you know, getting all that crap out of it. But you would think that you would car wax, you wouldn't want to use it to help dry. This is kind of like the uh, H2O garden gloss that Adams makes. Yeah, only this is wax. It's optimum car wax. We're going to use this as our drying aid. So essentially what we want is, you know, we still have some water on the paint. We want a layer of lubrication, right, to help it avoid any toweling marks or scratching. Uh, now this stuff is a little trickier because it is a wax. So we don't want to, you know, we don't want to just cake this on. The more you put on, the harder it is to get off. Now, another thing you want to do, a little trick, even though I have nice towels and I take care of them, you still want to make sure that there's nothing in it. You know, that there isn't something sticking out that could you know, damage the paint. So that's just a good practice to get into. Every time a towel touches the car, you want to inspect it. You spray it and then use the clean side to kind of like... Yeah, I mean, you'll see it. You know, I mean, there's, you can still see some streaking, so I'm probably going to want to use a couple of towels. That's right. So I'll start on the trunk? Yeah. I don't know, I think it smells good. I want to use it somewhere. I don't like it on the paint as much, but I feel like it does better in the dirty areas of the car. And then these towels seem too good to be using on the dirty door jams, but I love it for this application. Do you know anything about Bitcoin? Yeah. Should I buy Bitcoin? No. When it goes down? Never. Why? Too late. You missed the party. Apparently it's still predicted to go way higher. You know, it may. In general, with investing, you know, and buying speculative things like that, I don't know, I think you need to really get immersed into it and, and really follow it and become sort of an expert on it. Otherwise, you just leave it alone. Now this is a, like a hybrid coating slash cleaner. It's called Optimum Gloss, or Optimum Glass Clean and Protect. But the key with windows and cleaning them is waffle weave. Oh, the, uh, the towel. Right. right. See, you would think this is not really designed for windows, but it does such a great job of, I don't know, one, grabbing any dirt or bugs or anything like that. But it also is pretty heavy GSM, grams per square meter. So it's heavy enough that it, it soaks up water pretty well. Hmm. So we're hitting the tires with some Carpo Pearl. I, I don't like shiny tires. You know, it's like prerequisite number one. Um, 
when it comes to the, sort of the last step. I, I think this makes a big difference in what your what your overall car looks like when your tires look clean. And so this will go on pretty satin. Uh, and what I'll generally do is after I'll let it sit for you know five minutes or so. By the time I get around all four tires, and I'll come back and I'll wipe it a little bit. That's um, smart because I hate it when it flings. Right. And we deal with this in Florida more than other places with the humidity. You notice all the rust on your rotors. Yeah. I have another product called Hides that I would normally spray on. Uh, the BBS wheels masked it, and I forgot to forgot to do it. But here is the finished product. We now have a properly washed car. I didn't go into crazy detail, but that is Matt's thing. Matt is going to be making a video of uh, what we did today, and he goes into yeah. way more detail in terms of talking about the products and uh, why he uses them, etc. So if you're really curious to learn a really in-depth knowledge on how to wash cars, detail them, everything, I highly recommend checking out Obsessed Garage. There will be a link next to your head <laughs> or somewhere on the screen. We actually, I actually have a shameless plug. I've packaged, it, I've been getting hit up so much for exactly what products, like everything that we use in this is packaged. So I now have is there's the car wash package and then the wheel cleaning package. So Again, if you don't know Matt, you're probably wondering what the deal is with this S2000 over here. This is Matt's, actually just got this car. It's a S2000 CR. CR means club racer, right Matt? Yeah. So it's like a super rare special edition S2000. He's already supercharged it, did a full correction on the car. He's got wheels and brakes coming. How much power does the car make? Uh, and when are you gonna let me drive it? Probably never. Why? I think this is gonna be a nobody drives car. Yeah? Nobody but me drives car. Is it because it's fast or is it because it's your baby? Um, I don't know. You trust me with your GT3 and the Smoky Mountains. Yeah. This one's a little bit uh, more insane. While I'm out in this area, I decided I would stop at a very conveniently located place that I have the fortune of being near. And it is in Juku Racing. I've got a bag full of stuff, mainly just maintenance stuff. I'll show you guys later for uh, my 240. But it's super convenient having them local and just being able to go and pick up parts, especially when you're always in a rush and everything has a deadline like me. You guys aren't gonna imagine what I'm about to drive up next to. Can you see it up there? It's hiding. Goals. I chased the owner down and he's actually gonna let me drive it. Would you look at that? I get to drive it. It's actually really great to be able to practice driving on the right side again because we're going back to Japan super soon. Sounds so cool. I showed you guys before that sample of the poster that we were going to do. We decided to go through with this uh, photo. You may have seen me post it on my Instagram. It's from Seems Legit. So we bought the rights to the photo off of him and we are producing these prints, posters, whatever you want to call them. I definitely wouldn't call them a poster though because we went with this like really heavy, um, it's almost like postcard material. It's really thick. And what we're doing, I thought it would be cool to do like only 300 signed ones and then maybe every month we'll do a different print. So I'm gonna sign 300 of them and those will be on the site probably sometime like tomorrow. We've had requests for like posters or something like this forever so I'm really happy that we're finally doing it and I have a photo that I'm stoked on. And then I think Nicole and I are also gonna sign a couple dozen in addition to these 300 to give out to people who order all three of the new shirt designs that I will be showing you tomorrow that will be released tomorrow. More details coming soon. Nicole's killing it with the numbering. 58, we're on 58. I gotta catch up. Tomorrow's gonna be super hectic because we gotta do a ton of packing for good life and I don't have my car yet back from paint so there's a lot of last minute stuff still to do. So these are the ones that we'll be sending out with orders They get all three of the new designs. Not nearly as many. If you get the one with the extra heart, just know it was in the video. <laughs> For whatever reason, I really like playing blue style leads over like metal style riffs. So that's what we're gonna do. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video.